If you're new to Final Cut Pro, you're probably making at least one of these mistakes. On occasion, I'll work with private students. And when we first get started, I see them making the same mistakes over and over again. So I thought it would be helpful to kind of just show you what those really common mistakes are and what you should be doing instead. The first really common mistake is not understanding the purpose of libraries. People will start one Final Cut library and then everything they work on from now into eternity gets pulled into that library. That is a huge mistake because that library is is going to get enormous in file size. And then every time you go to open it in Final Cut Pro, your computer is going to have a harder and harder time. You're going to run out of disk space. It's going to be a nightmare. Here's what your library should actually look like. This is a look at like an external drive I have plugged in right now. You can see I have multiple libraries. They're all for like different clients. Some of them are the same client but different projects that we've worked on. Having multiple libraries keeps me organized and keeps these libraries from getting huge in file size. Now, in one particular library, you can see I'll have a whole bunch of different projects and I have a whole bunch of different events with my media sorted, but all of these videos are related to each other for one like client project. Now you can have multiple libraries open at once. These are two separate libraries. And if I needed to share media between them, I could. I could grab a drone shot and drop it into a project from another library. And then when I do that, I get this pop-up window. It tells me I'm editing between libraries and do I wanna copy that media, just that one clip into this other library. So remember, these purple squares are not your actual Final Cut app. They are like separate documents in Final Cut Pro, the same way you might have like Microsoft Word on your computer, but then like a bunch of different Microsoft Word documents. That's how you should think of your libraries. All right, the next big mistake I see a lot of noobs making is not paying attention to where they're importing their media when they start a new library. So when you open the media import window here in Final Cut, the most important window to look at is this one here. Do you want to copy your media to the library or leave the files in place? What does this mean? When you select copy the media to the library, what it does is it sucks in and ingests those clips right into that purple Final Cut library file. So if you have that library on a portable drive and then you go home and you plug in that drive to a different computer, all of that media will be included in your library. I recommend and Apple recommends that you copy the files to your library so they always stay with your library. Now, what does leaving the files in place do? When you choose leave files in place, what you're doing is that you're just having Final Cut reference that video file from wherever else it's living on your computer or an external drive. What that means is that let's say that video clip was on an external drive, but your Final Cut library was on a different external drive in the future, you're always going to have to have both of those drives plugged in in order to be able to edit your project. Whereas if you copy the files to the library, no matter where you bring that library to, it's always going to have that media in it. Now, why would you ever want to leave the files in place? Maybe if you're collaborating with someone else on a Final Cut project, and let's say you had all those files stored on a server somewhere, and you're both accessing them at the same time, and you're sharing the media, that might be a case where you want to leave the files in place. But for most users, especially new ones, you're going to want to copy the files to the library. Now, if you're working in a Final Cut library and you realize that you did not import your media into the right location, that's okay, you can go back and fix it later. Just head on up to File and Consolidate Project Media. And it's gonna ask you, do you want original media, optimized media, proxy media? I'm just gonna hit original media and I'm going to hit okay. And what that's going to do is suck all of the media from wherever it's living, anywhere, whether it be my internal hard drive, an external hard drive, anywhere, it's gonna bring it into my library. So all of my media is always living in my library so I can take that drive to any other computer that has Final Cut Pro on it and everything is going to be there. All right, the next mistake I often see noobs make, and this is kind of a hot take, but if you're editing on a laptop, I would definitely recommend you consider 
getting a separate mouse instead of just using the trackpad for a lot of reasons. When my private students are like screen sharing with me, I can see that they have trouble navigating with the trackpad. They have a hard time, I don't know, right clicking. It just doesn't seem as intuitive as just using a mouse. I also think it's like less ergonomic as well. So if you're going to be doing a lot of editing, I totally recommend you get a mouse. Now, Apple does make a mouse. Hold on. Apple does make this. It's like a magic mouse and it's really cool looking, very sleek. But here's another hot take. I'll be honest with you. I'm not crazy about the magic mouse. I really like using a mouse with a wheel on it. So I've been using like this Logitech mouse, it's grippy, it's a little more ergonomic. And what I like about this one is it comes in different sizes. So if you have like small hands like I do, it's nice because it really fits in my hand very comfortably. So I will link to both of these down below, but I just, I think you should consider it. I know it's a hot take, but I think you should consider it. All right, the next mistake I see a lot of people making is not learning the keyboard shortcuts in Final Cut Pro. And I know keyboard shortcuts can be intimidating because there's a lot of them and they seem kind of arbitrary, right? Like how are you supposed to remember these? But truly keyboard shortcuts streamline your workflow. And if you can just remember like a few of the basic ones, it's really gonna help you out a lot. If you can remember like working in the browser, I to mark an in and O to mark an out, that's a super easy one and super helpful for you to remember. Another one you'll want to know is W for inserting clips in your timeline, E for appending clips to the end of your timeline, and Q for connecting clips to the top of your timeline. And then working in the timeline tools, you'll want to remember that A gets you back to the selection tool, which is just like your regular cursor arrow. And then B brings up the blade tool so you can split clips in half. And T is the trim tool, which does a whole lot of different things. If you can remember just like those eight keyboard shortcuts to start, I think you're gonna like working in Final Cut a lot better. In my videos here on YouTube, when I'm working in Final Cut, a lot of times you'll see me drag and drop. And I really just do that to be like illustrative so people can follow along and see what I'm doing. But in real life, I'm always using keyboard shortcuts. And once you get comfortable with those very basic ones, going forward, you'll pick up more and more and more and you will learn to love keyboard shortcuts, I promise you. All right, the next mistake a lot of noobs make, a lot of noobs make, is not getting formal education on Final Cut Pro. I know this might come as a shock to some of you, but I was not born knowing how to edit in Final Cut Pro. Years and years and years ago, I took a course on Lynda, which is now LinkedIn Learning. And that is how I really got my hands deep into Final Cut Pro instead of just like fumbling around with it. And there's a ton of resources out there, tons of courses that are so worth your while. Obviously there's LinkedIn Learning. I have my own course, Final Cut Rockstar at jenjager.com, which is self-paced, which is nice because you can just kind of take it at your own leisure. If you prefer more of a classroom setting, there are like virtual live training courses you can find. There's so many different resources out there, but I really recommend that you get a course that starts you at the beginning and takes you through everything you need to know about Final Cut Pro. You will learn a lot in a really organized way. And I think that's gonna help make it stick better for you than just like going to YouTube University and scattershot trying to like figure out how to do things, okay? So get yourself some formal training. The next mistake I see a lot of noobs make is not backing up your files. It is so important to back up your media. What if something happens to your external drive or your Final Cut project becomes corrupted. Now you might be confused by this because Final Cut actually never asks you to save your work. Have you ever noticed that? Final Cut auto saves, but guess what? Final Cut auto saves like the structure of your libraries and projects and events, but it does not auto save your media. You need to copy your media to a separate drive and keep it safe somewhere for all eternity for as long as you're gonna need that media. Now you can do that right at the card level. You can copy a folder from your card and I would not rename this folder. I would create a new folder, rename it, and then drop this into that folder. That's what I would recommend. Or once you've imported all of your media and copied your files to the library, like I showed you before, you can take that whole Final Cut library and drag it and drop it 
to another drive for safekeeping. And then Final Cut will auto save all the work you do as you go and it'll save that shell for you. And so you'll always have the most recent version of your Final Cut project, but then you have your media stored somewhere else. Now, let me just show you where you access those backups. You're going to wanna to go to your movies and you'll see this folder automatically there, Final Cut Backups. And here are these folders that represent every Final Cut library that I've made on this computer that I have not yet deleted. So if I open this folder, you can see it's a series of libraries, but these libraries are very small in file size. This one's only less than 68 megabytes. And if I open it, it's gonna ask me where I wanna save it because I don't have this drive plugged in you can see it's nothing but missing media. If you guys want a tutorial on how to relink all of this missing media, if you don't know how to do that, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to show you. But in the meantime, I just wanted to show you that those backups are just the file structure of all the work you've done, but the actual media isn't living in these libraries because think about how much space that would take up on your computer, right? So just make sure that you back up all of your media in one way or another, super duper important. Okay, another mistake that I see users make is not deleting your render files when you're done working on a project, but you wanna save it and archive it for later. Render files in Final Cut Pro take up so much space and they really expand the size of your library. So you can clear them out when you're done working on your project and reduce the size of your libraries significantly. Let me show you. So this library is one that we already have open in Final Cut. I'm gonna right click on it and hit get info. And you can see it's 175 gigabytes. Let me close that. I'm gonna select that library here in Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go up to File, Delete Generated Library Files, and I'm going to delete my render files. And I'm going to make sure I select all of them. Let me hit OK. And let's go back to that library. Now you can see I've reduced my library size by 50 gigabytes with just a few clicks of my mouse. It's definitely something you want to do before you archive a project, but you can even do this while you're actively working on a Final Cut library. If you feel like your drive is getting really full or that the project just generally seems kind of sluggish, go ahead and delete those render files. It will not hurt your Final Cut library. And the last mistake a lot of noobs make is ignoring my friend Apple Motion. Apple Apple Motion is the companion motion graphics app to Final Cut Pro. These two apps talk to each other, they integrate, they're like peanut butter and jelly. Apple Motion allows you to create way more interesting animations than you can in Final Cut Pro. And it really elevates the look and quality of your work product for the things that you're putting together in Final Cut Pro. And I know it can seem intimidating, you know, you're just learning Final Cut and like trying to learn Apple Motion at the same time might seem like a lot. I would recommend you get pretty comfortable with Final Cut and then jump on over to Apple Motion. I think you're really going to like it and you're going to like what it brings to your Final Cut Pro projects. You guys, those are the most common mistakes I see new users making. Did I forget anything? Let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, pick out some other videos I know you're going to love and I'll see you again.